I suspect that most of you don't realize that we actually do impact endangered species in ways that you may not even think of it. This is a blue bottle. It's actually called blue blood. And probably everyone in this room has benefited from this substance. It's harvested every year from horseshoe crabs. 400,000 crabs a year are harvested on the East Coast. They're impaled in these factories where one-third of their blood is drained. And the reason that you've benefited from this is because of that blue protein. It is used for every injectable drug or vaccine that you've ever had or anyone you know to make them safe, safe from the impurities in the manufacturing process that could come in from bacteria in the water. That LAL substance it's referred to is the gold standard for drug manufacturing today. And it's used with not only drugs and vaccines, with every implanted device. And it's used even in veterinary medicine. But here is where the horseshoe crab lives. This species comes in once a year on the high tides of May and June to spawn. And it spawns in the thousands of eggs every year. And it provides not only for the proliferation of its species, but also as sustenance for wild birds and a whole ecosystem. And these wild birds, in particular, this is the red knot, they migrate all the way from the tip of South America all the way to the Arctic Circle. And they make one pit stop in Delaware Bay to refuel on the eggs of the horseshoe crab. Now, these species are being listed. They're endangered. They're not making it to the Arctic Circle. And when they're making it to the Arctic Circle, those that do are so thin and underfed that they usually are not breeding. This is a multi-continent ecological problem. And it's something that is done for the welfare of humanity. That's why it's so linked to everything that we do. But it doesn't have to be that way. And that's where synthetic biology comes in. Scientists back in 1995 at the University of Singapore, Dr. Ling and Dr. Ho, actually identified that unique protein in the horseshoe crab that they make the LAL substance from. And that unique protein was synthesized and has been created what we call the recombinant factor C. That RFC has languished on the market because of corporate greed, because there's so much money in the blood of the horseshoe crab. And it's also because of bureaucratic inertia and regulatory inertia. We've been advocating for the pharmaceutical companies to do something, to adopt this synthetic alternative, to force the regulatory authorities to do something. We and other conservation groups have organized a coalition and we've sent letters ad nauseum. But one really bold scientist from Eli Lilly has changed the whole dynamic. I, I'm a birder, so I have a unique perspective in that I can see the impact of the horseshoe crab, not only because of the horseshoe crab itself, but the, the species that rely on it, including birds and turtles and sport fish and all, you know, anything that's in the, the ecosystem that it's impacting. And so we were aware at Lilly that there was an alternative to the, to the LAL test reagent. We generated the data, but it took a lot of alignment internally. And then externally, we had to convince the FDA and uh, other health authorities around the world. But we did that with our data and we convinced them. We drew a line in the sand in 2016 and we said that all new drugs that are manufactured at Lilly, we would apply a common factor C to them. And so our first product was approved in 2018. And that was a milestone because that was at first an industry approval of any medicine using RFC for release. And then we've subsequently had six additional product approvals since then, including our three COVID-19 antibodies. Our goal when we set out was to convert all eight of our manufacturing quality control labs at the time to RFC. And we've done that. And it's been industries following. We have, we have our peers, Sanofi and Pfizer and Roche Genentech have all come out and made statements 
similar to what we've done, which is that we'll convert our water testing and all of our new product testing. So there's definitely a movement towards more sustainable endotoxin testing. One footnote on that. America truly is lagging behind on this adoption. Europe, Japan, Korea have all adopted the standards to approve RFC and testing. It's really our country that is the problem. The horseshoe crab has been around for 445 million years. It's survived five mass extinctions. And it's not until the last 100 years that humans have threatened it with extinction. I believe that when humans cause the problem, we have a responsibility to create solutions. If we look back 10,000 years, the world was a very different planet. There was much more biodiversity. But because of our human presence, we have actually closed out so many of those opportunities to let those species thrive. We're at a point in time where I think that by combining both conventional approaches to conservation along with new technologies and biotechnology, that we can actually envision a much richer, more bioabundant future. It takes time to make changes happen in conservation. The conservationists that we work with, in some cases, they have to work at the pace of nature. But the truth is, they all live in the long now. And we're all looking to see how we can build a better future. Thank you.